A Victorian Liberal frontbencher is demanding Andrews answers from Premier Daniel Andrews, who's been off work since March after a fall left him seriously injured. Now, in a statement, the opposition treasurer, Louise Staley, issued a series of questions for the Premier, wanting more detail about the circumstances of his accident, which to date has not been disclosed. Now, Ambulance Victoria, well, they've released a response to Staley's queries, confirming paramedics arrived at a Sorrento home on or around the time of the fall. For more on this, opposition treasurer from Victoria, Louise Staley, joins me now from the State Parliament. Uh, Louise, your questions have certainly ruffled some feathers today, resulting in a response from Ambulance Victoria. You demanded to know, here's some of your questions, what time uh, did the incident occur? Who was in the house at the time of the incident? The address, details surrounding uh, the ambulance arrival and if police were contacted. Now, today, Ambulance Victoria have only released details surrounding the time of the ambulance arrival, leaving all your other questions unanswered. Why do you think these questions are in the public interest, Louise Staley? Good evening, Peter. Daniel Andrews has been off work now for 93 days. He has a very serious injury. We haven't had a political leader uh, away from his or her post for this long since I think Bob Menzies went to England in the 60s. Uh, it's, it's extraordinary to have someone uh, retain the position but uh, not be here. And uh, as you well know, uh, we give up quite a lot in terms of privacy when we go into public life. It's called public life for a reason. Uh, and uh, these are questions that need answering. He's been on sick leave. You've made that point for 90 days now. You've raised the fact too, he's continued to be paid top dollar. He's the nation's highest paid Premier. Despite being on leave, he's picked up over $100,000 during that time. But, you know, I know a lot of other people out there in the community wouldn't have the three or four months of sick leave up their sleeve that he does. But, but sick leave is paid to workers, including politicians. What makes it different for the Premier? Well, I think there's a couple of things. Firstly, we don't actually accrue sick leave or annual leave. Uh, we, we don't actually have that. We have to go to the speaker and say, look, we won't be there and give the reason. But I think in this case, everybody gets paid really well as a politician. Backbenchers earn $200,000. And then you get a loading if you're doing higher duties, which is a very common uh, a thing in, in the public sector and other places. And he's not doing his higher duties. So all I'm saying is that I think he should fall back to the normal MP's salary and James Molino should be getting the Premier's salary because he's doing the job. Well, there's been a lot of rumours around in the last few months about um, how his injuries came to bear. He said he slipped uh, on steps at this holiday property. Um, I haven't put any of those rumours to air. Politics is full of rumours. I know from my time, 99.9% .9 yeah. of them are false. And we're not suggesting, I'm not suggesting certainly foul play or anything here, but, but you're today being called a conspiracy theorist, amongst many other things. What's your response to that? Well, Peter, I think you've actually just hit the nail on the head. You haven't put any of these rumours to air, and I am not suggesting any of them. All I want is some really simple answers to some simple questions. And as you led in, Ambulance uh, Victoria has answered five of the 12 questions. So uh, there's seven to go, and I'm hoping that, that Premier Andrews, having made the start in answering them, uh, will continue and, and mm. we will get the answers to these questions. I've never worked in Victorian politics. I've only ever worked in federal politics. And, and up there, I work for senior politicians, party leaders, opposition leaders, prime ministers. I, I have to say, in almost every circumstance, an absence usually prompts a lot of questions from the Canberra Press Galley. I know the acting Premier today said you should be ashamed of yourself for asking for more detail here. I'm just surprised that there's, there's sort of one standard of disclosure required by MPs in Canberra and a completely different, much lower standard in Victoria. Will you keep the pressure up for the response to the remaining questions, Louise? I, I will indeed, Peter, and you know that firsthand from the, the work you did during the long lockdown in Melbourne. There is a difference between the, the state press gallery and the national one, 
and I'll keep this pressure up, absolutely. What do you make of the admission today by the government and officials that, that you know, it was another hotel quarantine breach uh, that's mm. to blame for the escape of this highly infectious Delta virus? It's our fourth lockdown out of hotel quarantine, a bit of deja vu or worse? Oh, look, it's, it's, it's worse because uh, at, we've had resets of hotel quarantine now twice. It's meant to be fixed. Uh, and they knew, they knew this was flagged days ago and they're only saying it today. So it's all the pattern again. It's, it's not just the escape from hotel quarantine. I think people understand that, that hotel quarantine can have breakouts. What we don't accept is this idea that, that well, they're not going to tell Victorians, and then when they do, they're again going to blame others. You know, we, we had them try and blame the federal government again today. It just won't, won't wash. They run this program and they're not running it properly. And do you think anything will change, Louise, if it's built by the Commonwealth but still run by the same mob here in Victoria? What's different? I do worry about that. Uh, the, the only thing I would hope is that with the Commonwealth involved, it will be a, a built-for-purpose facility and uh, I would hope that the, the inherent design of it would therefore make it less likely that we'd get uh, escapes from it. So I, I'm hopeful that the Commonwealth's involvement will uh, improve the situation because we just cannot go on with these lockdowns. Not, you know, this is our fourth one. We can't continue to have them. Well, if someone does come and give you those uh, answers to those questions, Louise Daly, please come back on the show. We'd love to get the answers out to my viewers as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Peter.